Thank you, Madam Speaker. And I rise today in strong support of the Infant Formula Supplemental Appropriations Act. And I want to particularly thank Appropriations Chairwoman Rosa DeLora for all she's done to shed light on the contamination of infant formula and the problems with FDA enforcement. She talks about me, but I want to talk about her because she has really taken this issue to heart for such a long period of time. But I have to say that I am extremely upset listening to the members on the other side, the Republicans, talk about this crisis and how uh, it could have been avoided. I've been on the Energy and Commerce Committee now for over 30 years. FDA's policies of food safety, unlike that for drugs and medical devices, is not based on fees paid by the manufacturers. And this is because Republicans in the past have not been willing to impose those fees on the manufacturers. I can tell you that personal, from personal experience, when I tried to include a, a fee structure in food safety initiatives in the past, before my committee, the Energy and Commerce Committee, every time it was opposed by the Republicans because they were listening to the manufacturers who didn't want that fee schedule imposed on them. We have it for drugs, we have it for medical devices, we don't have it for food safety, and that's right in the hands of the Republican leadership. And I'm not particularly blaming um, the appropriators today because this was not an appropriations issue, this was an energy and commerce issue. But to suggest in some way that this is the Democrats, I will tell you it's the Republicans. If that money had been in place, we would have had the inspectors. We would have had the ability, in my opinion, to do a lot more on the issue of food safety. And so this crisis, to some extent, is based on the Republicans' unwillingness to adopt a fee structure and provide that, that regular source of funding for the FDA. Now let me also say that in addition to the emergency funding, the House is, has, is also voting tonight to grant flexibility to the WIC program. I want to thank Ed and Labor for that. The Biden administration has taken a number of important actions to respond to this shortage, including work with, working with manufacturers to increase production, encouraging importation of safe infant formula, and today, as the chairwoman of appropriations said, the operation the White House has announced, including the use of Defense Production uh, Act to show that that shows that this administration can, is continued to commit to end this crisis. The Energy Commerce Committee also today unanimously passed a measure to allow FDA to streamline processes for hiring highly skilled professionals and retain them with competitive salaries, and this will help ensure our infant formula supply is safe and inspectors are on the job. Now, I just want to say, Madam Speaker, manufacturers have to do a better job in the future to alert the FDA of potential shortages so we can shift production quickly, and the FDA must be empowered to, more, to move more quickly to set limits on contamination, which is currently bogged down in long and cumbersome regulatory processes. We understand that more needs to be done, but this bill needs to be passed today. Oh, okay. Gentleman from Connecticut reserves. Gentlewoman from Texas. I yield to the gentlewoman from Iowa, Ms. Henson, for five minutes. The gentleman, gentlewoman from 